What is going on, everybody? I am your host, Slackers, bringing you our next matchup in the Ultimate Smash Bros. DLC tournament. Now, uh, if you're new and you're stumbling across this wondering what this is, it is a tournament me and my community put together. Uh, I'm just laughing. Somebody in the comments in uh, one of my uh, videos of this past week said I should just record this, and then I don't have to keep on doing it every video, but whatever. Uh, basically, this is a tournament me and my community put together of 72 characters that potentially have the chance to be in Smash Ultimate in the Fighter Pass for uh, DLC. So um, we put, uh, put them in this tournament, and then each day on my channel, I upload one matchup from this tournament. And then uh, we vote down in the comments for which of the two characters in the matchup for the for the day that you would rather see in Smash Ultimate. So um, you only get one vote, but uh, you can vote both characters. So today's matchup is uh, uh, Plusle and Minin taking on Edelgard. So you get one vote. You can vote both, but uh, you only get one. So make it count. Otherwise, rules. Double elimination tournament, meaning a character has to lose two times before being officially eliminated. You lose once, drop to the loser bracket, you lose from there, you're done. If there's ever a tie in the voting, flip a coin on camera, best and fairest way to break said tie. And then uh, each matchup voting-wise, it only stays open one week. That way uh, we get uh, results and the tournament keeps on flowing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, how that goes. So with that out of the way, we get to go over the results from last week, which was Master Chief taking on Knack. Um... Didn't really expect uh, Knack to win. Uh, he didn't. Um, but uh, it was a little closer than I guess I thought. Uh, Master Chief ended up winning 34-21. to 21, So, real quick, the people that did vote Knack, there's quite a bit of them that actually said they would enjoy his uh, play style. So, uh, looks like there are fans of Knack out there. I am a fan of Knack. I voted for Master Chief in this one. I'd just much rather see him. But uh, Knack would uh, make a pretty interesting character. Unfortunately, Knack has now suffered a second loss, so he's done from the tournament. Master Chief gets to move on for at least one more match. So, uh, see how that goes, but uh, congrats to Master Chief. So, let's get to the matchup for the day, shall we? Plus one mining against Edelgard. So, uh, where are we starting with Edelgard? Alright, Edelgard. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah, 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 I know. Fire Emblem character. No thank you, get him off, get him away from Smash Bros. We don't need it. What we don't need from Fire Emblem is a 712th Marth clone. Look, I used to be in the boat, no more Fire Emblem. But then I started thinking about it and I looked at the, you know, when you really look at the roster, specifically the uh, Fire Emblem characters, you can cut down a lot of characters. You can just go with Marth. Uh, Robin is, Robin's actually okay. Totally different sort of moveset with there. Um, I know people hate Korn because of the whole uh, DLC in Smash Wii U 3DS, which was bizarre. But Korn has a totally different play style to everybody else, so I'm okay with that. As long as you bring something different and unique to the roster, I'm all for it. I don't care if there's already 20 different uh, members from your, you know, the, your universe. As long as you bring something different, I'm fine. I don't. I'm not too worried about over repping a certain series or anything like that just bring something different to the table so i'm fine with edelgard because she would be a an axe wielder now some people would say uh why is it edelgard and not you know dimitri or claude well edelgard's just kind of been the one that's been the most talked about most speculated for a fire emblem three houses rep plus fire emblem three houses is well a nintendo game which comes out in july about, what, a little over a month after E3. So, I mean, look, E3, perfect time to announce the next DLC, if not maybe the next two fighters in the DLC. Um, Fighter Pass for Smash Bros. Uh, is there a chance that Nintendo does drop a first-party character in there? I think there is a good chance. I, I really do. I could see them going with one first-party character in the Fighter Pass. But I expect a majority of it to be third-party, uh, AAA, sort of big-name characters, so... I'm uh, just putting that out there, but uh, Edelgard would work, and I'd be okay with it. It's another female. More females are always, I think, uh, most people are definitely open to that idea, but uh, she's a female. Definitely room for that. Uh, would be a different moveset, different variant for her character, which, hey, like I was stating earlier, if you can bring something different and unique uh, that we don't really have, an axe wielder, come on. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it, so... Yeah, with that being said, though, um, yeah, it's still Fire Emblem. I know it's going to turn a lot of people off. You know, a lot of people are just going to, no. 
I, and I get it. I get it. You know, when you when you get oversaturated with a certain amount of characters that are lookalikes, that are copies of each other, that maybe maybe you just like more diverse. Um, I guess uh, different series from gaming from Nintendo especially there I mean there's all sorts of characters they can still pull from that uh, uh, they could rep maybe a different series that has like no uh, representation yet or maybe a series that has very little representation so um, yeah again I'm not terribly you know like oh crap another Fire Emblem character I wouldn't be like that's not a reason for me to hate the uh, character whatsoever just bring something different, all right? Just bring something different, and, and I'm good, and I'm good. So, um, yeah, again, first party, I think there's a pretty decent chance. Not saying Fire Emblem is the only first party, because we still got Pokemon coming out uh, later this year, and maybe there's a good chance that could end up being the last character in the Fighter Pass. Who knows? We'll see, but, uh, yeah, let's move on to Edelgard's opponent, which happens to actually be... Pokemon, so, <laughs> uh, Plus and Minin were a part of the cut characters from the, uh, Forbidden 7, they'd work in tandem, they'd work as a duo, and we have very few characters that do that, Ice Climbers, and, uh, Duck Hunt, I mean, that's pretty much it, right, the only two duo characters, so, uh, that sort of moveset, that sort of style is pretty awesome, uh, you know, kind of working off each other, relying on your partner to, you know, help out with attacks, help out with recovery, help out with whatever. Just a pretty cool little play style. So, uh, plus one mining, yeah, they are a Pika clone. So, I mean, in a way, okay, see, this is tough. Because I, I was just saying, bring something unique to the table, and they do. Uh, duo style, right? Awesome. I, I like duo style. Ice Climber is actually one of my top played characters. Duck Hunt is, uh, is somewhere in the upper middle range. But I like the duo style. I like it. But then again, how would they play? I don't think they'd really play that similarly to Pikachu. I mean, yeah, there's going to be similarities for sure. They're a little electric rodent sort of thing, but there's there's definite sort of different uh, different moves they can pull from. I mean, Pokemon, they're basically, they have this widespread, uh, you know, moveset pool that you can pull from, and you can just ultimately make <laughs> make any sort of moveset. Uh, take a take a random move that they might have learned in one game that maybe they haven't learned in a, a game since then or something like that would be pretty cool to see. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, working together, uh, you know, they do have that sort of stuff in Pokemon games, maybe like Helping Hand. Uh, they have this move right here. Somebody had a mock-up for Baton Pass. Um, not sure exactly how that... I don't know, maybe they switch over time? And uh, if you switch... Um, Maybe the other, you know, if Plusle switches with Minin, maybe Minin comes in and has a slight buff to attacks or something like that, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure, uh, but that'd be kind of interesting, actually. But, of course, they're Pika clones, so people will be, people pretty, if you're a Pika clone, your, your name is pretty well known in the Pokemon universe. So, I mean, they got that going for them, but, uh, I mean, overall, Plusle and Minin, uh, do they have the best chance? <laughs> no. Let's face it. If Pokemon's getting a new rep um, in Smash Bros. for DLC, it's going to be from the newest generation Pokemon Sword and Shield that's, well, coming out later this year. And uh, this year just so happens to, well, have four more remaining slots at the time of recording that uh, we don't know who the character could be for Smash Ultimate. So... One of them could go first party. One of them could go to uh, Pokemon. One of them could go to Fire Emblem. It's very possible. But for me, <laughs> this one's pretty simple. Between these two, uh, who would I rather see? Um, I'd rather. I'd actually rather rather see Edelgard. I, I honestly would. I think the the move set. Uh, plus, I know I'm I'm stoked for both. I'm getting Fire Emblem Three Houses, and I'm going to get Pokemon Sword or Shield. Probably not both, but. Yeah, not both Sword and Shield, but one or the other, and Fire Emblem. So I'm going to get both games. I'm I'm excited to hear more about both of them, honestly. I mean, it's uh, it's shaping up to be a great year for a Nintendo again, first-party exclusives and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, for me in this matchup, Edelgard gets my vote. There's a uh, plus one line, and just for me, are not up there in terms of Pokemon I'd rather see. Um, there's way more other... I, I honestly would like to see... I know we know, like... What, three Pokemon from Generation 8? Uh, wait, does Meltan and its evolution, do they count? 
for news generation. If they do, probably they do. So we know five. Uh, but you're kind of going in blind if you're like, yeah, I want a Pokemon Sword and Shield rep. Well, you have no idea who's in it. That is true. But I would trust Pokemon's judgment, you know, so... Yeah, that's just me. Edelgard gets my vote. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Who's your vote? Edelgard or Plus Alone Mining or both, which is totally fine. So with that being said, this one's coming to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed. So let's give you a sneak peek for tomorrow. Um, let's see. Matchup. Game 52. We'll get the results of Hat Kid taking on Jabanyan. So that should be an interesting one, actually. Um, had uh, I seen there's a quite a decent number of comments, so can't wait to tally up those votes. That'll be tomorrow's results and tomorrow's matchup. Go to game 58. Porky. Ah, oh, Sandbag is back. So Porky Minch from the uh, Earthbound Mother series taking on Sandbag, the smashiest character of all time. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, tomorrow's matchup and results, but today is over. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I have another video coming out later today, another Amiibo video, so... You like amiibos? Check it out, maybe. <laughs> but uh, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.